Hey guys, All in Crypto here and welcome back ladies and gentlemen for another YouTube video. This of course is going to be your daily cryptocurrency market update. And for those of you that are new around here, every single day at 1pm we release an update just like this one to help you guys navigate not only the cryptocurrency markets but the broader markets also. We know that there is a correlation. You guys know I think that markets are largely a liquidity game. And ultimately, there's correlations between the markets. And we help you to try and understand that and really try and work out where we think Bitcoin is going. And we've been uh, having a really good run really over the last couple of years. Really, since I got into crypto, um, it's been, I think, easy in some ways to navigate. Um, but what we really try and do uh, as an investor is look for key points, key turning points in the market. Um, so we got out at around about 44k last year and got in um, at your sort of 15k mark for Bitcoin. That's all public and you can go and verify that yourself. But I want to go over a few things in this video. You guys know that I believe upside not just for Bitcoin, but gold and the stock market. I can actually see, and this is a crazy call, but we've been saying it for a while now, the S&P going on and putting in new all-time highs. Now, why is it I think this with such a doom and gloom macro outlook? Well, we've looked at the two-year yields, which leads to Fed fund rate, and we are predicting that the Fed is going to go sideways with rates. Now, if you look at what happens, and if we just use the S&P as an example, I'm going to talk about the S&P, I'm going to talk about the Nikkei, I'm going to talk about a few other things, because we have said, and we're one of the only channels to say this, that if you look at the charts, it's very different from the headlines. But let's just focus on sideways rates, this kind of point um, that we think we're at. You know, I think there's a lot of fear still in the markets. However, if you look at the last time rates went sideways, you had that for the markets. If you look at the prior time, rates went sideways here, and you had this for the markets. And actually, even over here, Rates went sideways at this point and the market then pushed on higher. So we do think that that is coming. That's 20 years plus worth of history. Uh, and ultimately, we think the stock market's going to do well. We think crypto is going to do well. We think uh, gold is going to do well. And we think the dollar is looking for downside. Now, the dollar has been a thorn in our side recently. We have suggested this. And by the way, guys, we released an absolute cracker of an update on Sunday with my for my Patreons. Um, I do weekly meetings as part of the Patreon. Also released an updated portfolio yesterday. Very interesting. We've got so much going on in there. I believe that you will not find another group quite like it in the crypto space with such a wide range of knowledge covering a wide topic of subjects um, and really creating some um, pretty exciting investors and, 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 and sort of market participants out of it. But that being said, you know, the dollar has, you've got this, you know, you've got this kind of polarization right now, you know, dollar in a bull run, Bitcoin, crypto risk in a bear market as people look for safety. And this is actually one of the things that um, looking at USDT dominance, looking at Bitcoin, you know, before we had even put in this base here at 15k, we actually moved and said, look, I think we need to look at investing here regardless of the sentiment, um, because we've got a number of technical signals. But you've got this going on. You've got this polarization where you've got crypto and risk doing this and the dollar and the yields doing that. Um, and typically, bonds going up is is a, a risk thing. A risk will go up with it because it's a liquidity thing and, and, and money's going into that and vice versa. So we've got this kind of ending, I believe, of tight monetary... I shouldn't say an ending because they're still going to keep rates where they are. But there's going to be this kind of sigh of relief for the markets. We've seen this play out for crypto, which is a higher beta of the stock market. You saw very interestingly, and we've predicted all this, the NASDAQ go on and take out, take out its head and shoulders. Uh, crypto's higher ahead is a higher beta. And then the NASDAQ is higher ahead than the likes of the stock market, which is a lower beta. But it's all going in the right direction. This is at the same time that gold is around about its new all-time highs. We've got real issues in the banking sector. The individuals on YouTube talking about the US defaulting on their debt clearly have no understanding of what actually that would mean. Um, it is a poor, poor caliber of uh, individuals commenting on the markets on YouTube and Twitter. Twitter is actually even worse, in my opinion. Certainly your big accounts. Um, yeah, a lot could be said on that in, in regards to how they actually got to those big accounts. You know, I've got firsthand information um, that would be interesting. Uh, for me to talk on, but it's not really, I'm not in the business of messing around with anybody else's livelihood and, 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 and 
credibility. I more like to focus on my own. But the reason I bring this up is because if you look at the narrative out there, we were very early on this move. You know, there's a bit of luck always in that. We took positions back in the market saying we don't really know if this is the bottom. I've got some other interesting things to show with you guys, you know, talking about rates. This is the probability of them keeping them where they are. Um, we're also going to look at some comments from the UK because Rishi, the midget, um, literally came out and said, we want to be a crypto hub. We want to embrace it. And at the same time, they're saying we're going to regulate it like gambling. I mean, are you crazy? You know, this is a, a tweet from the market sniper talking about this, the crypto sniper. Go and give our good friend Francis a follow, guys. Well worth it. One of the brightest minds when it comes to markets and doesn't get anywhere near the recognition that he deserves. Um, I want to talk to you about why this is, why we're seeing such pushback from governments. We looked at a Hinman. Hinman was the former director of the SEC um, article or, or uh, talk on CNBC that he did in 2019, where he says cryptos aren't securities. You know, Ethereum, Bitcoin, we do not believe are securities. And we think if the token is a utility token, i.e. it's used to secure the network, it's used to pay fees on the network, it's used to as a part of the network, that makes it not a security. <clears throat> Very different from what Gens was saying. Why are they saying this? Well, I want to show you this. Um, so this is actually in relation to Tesla potentially inventing free energy. Um, that's not what I want to talk about. What I do want to talk about is um, what he's saying here in regards to banks and actually how governments um, actually don't want liberation for the masses. They want enslavement. And it doesn't benefit me as a channel to talk about this sort of stuff, guys. It goes against me massively. But do you know what? I don't care. Um, I really don't care. Um, because ultimately, I think this is important information. I believe that your government is responsible for the majority of hardship that human beings go through today. And actually, if you look at the Western governments, not just the hardships that take place in the country, the social structure and social destruction, but if you look at other countries, like the Middle East is a great example, they've had a real role to play in the destruction of those countries also, um, to an untold degree. But anyway, um, We'll look at this in just a second. Let me just finish up on my point. So I think the markets have adjusted and are now readjusting for future forecasts. And actually, we, again, if you can join the Patreon, even if it's just for a month to try it out, guys, we get a really, really good retention rate once people have tried it out. If you watch Sunday's meeting that we did, we actually looked at from Larry Williams, um, who's an OG in the sort of trading stock side of things, you know, financial markets. He was looking at the Fed's own stats that, that they use to sort of weigh up the economy. And actually, things don't look that bad. Now, I think there's going to be a continuous de deterioration in this um, in regards to jobs and things like that. And that's actually going to sort of tie into our theory that we believe the Fed is done with rate hikes. I don't believe they're going to go much higher. I think the two-year has topped the two-year yield. We were expecting a pushback on the two-year yield, um, and it's continuing to do that. You know, we think this is the top for the two-year. We think it ends on this kind of volatile event, and it's not going to go back up. Remember, the two-year is a forward guide for Fed funds. Typically, what's the two-year tops? They do about 25 basis points historically in the actual Fed funds, and then it goes sideways. We think you're there now, and we think, and we've just shown you what markets do, or the S&P does under that. I think it's a good time horizon. You know, right now, you're just in this sort of hurry-up-and-wait position. You've ran into resistance. It's acted exactly as that. 30K was predicted on this channel as being that. It's very obvious. There's no trickery in it. There is still the possibility of a run down to 25K, which is a neckline retest before you see that upside continuation. But I believe Bitcoin is going to go to 40K plus this year. Um, and your altcoins actually are going to play a lot of catch up. I get a lot of criticism for not being a Bitcoiner, um, even though we could have. The reason being is I think your altcoins are going to outperform over enough time. And then if you want to pivot back into Bitcoin, you can. Bit of a completely different strategy to what's um, out there generally. I understand why, and I'm, we're an appreciator of Bitcoin. You know, I love Bitcoin. However, um, you know, I, th I think altcoins outperform. But anyway, so the Fed funds going sideways seems likely. Let's talk about a little bit of news uh, and what's going on. I want to show you the Nikkei as well, actually, before I move on, which is the Japanese stock index. I think Japan's going to do well. We are investing right now in the number one cryptocurrency in Japan. They're partnered with the Japanese government. They're partnered with companies that you wouldn't even believe, yet nobody's talking about them. Uh, and you can find out more about that uh, in the Patreon. Um, let me show you Apple, because this is what we've said. We said, do the, do, do, the, do the charts 
match the sentiment? Does that match the sentiment, this rally? No, it doesn't. We think a crash is coming and it's going to be a serious one. I just don't think it's coming when everyone thinks it's coming, <laughs> if that makes sense. Look at the Nikkei. New all-time highs. I think you've got this coming for the S&P and other indexes, and it might be interesting to do a study on the Nikkei in relation to the S&P and such. Um, talking about the UK, so UK lawmakers bid to regulate crypto as gambling could be a political problem, invites industry a RAF. The Treasury is still adamant it will regulate digital assets like financial services, but it plans we will uh, rely on Parliament support. Rely, sorry, that's the dyslexic can be just trying to come out. Uh, the House of Commons Treasury Committee's um, opposition to the government's plan to regulate crypto like financial services generated an instant backlash from the industry as lawmakers view uh, through non-binding may represent a uh, an extra dump in the road to the UK's crypto plans. A Wednesday report from the panel's lawmakers led by the Conservative Party, Harriet Baldwin, doesn't matter who they are, guys, they're all corrupt criminals, in my opinion, uh, warned that consumers could be lulled into full sense of security if unbacked cryptocurrencies such as Bitcoin and Ethereum were regulated like investments, and that it should instead be regulated like gambling. Okay, here we are, guys. It's just, it's just, it's just so ridiculous. Um, you know, and if you don't get why cryptocurrencies are valuable, you have missed the entire essence of value. Why is anything valuable? Even gold. Why is gold valuable? Well, because it's a precious metal. It's hard to find, you know, um, this, that, and the other. And that probably makes it more valuable than the likes of silver, right? Or other less precious metals in that degree. But gold and everything, other than essentials like how, like shelter, food, all of this stuff, is only valuable because people believe it to be so. Adam Smith, money is an idol ideology, and actually value in many senses, other than necessities, the hierarchy of needs, are... Um, uh, you know, valuable because people believe them to, 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 to be so. Fiat systems are a, the embodiment of that. Um, and it's not even that, you know, people necessarily believe it. it's that your government doesn't give you any other choice, which we'll talk about in just a second. But um, Bitcoin and crypto are valuable because of the people that use it. The more people use it, the more its value will increase. We've seen this. This is Metcalfe's law. Uh, and that's, you know, unbacked well, why is Amazon? Why is Apple? Why were the internet stocks so valuable? Well, because people used them. You know, it's very, very interesting. Uh, and this is from the Crypto Sniper. Um, so that's the UK at the forefront of blockchain development. A committee of MPs state that cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin have no intrinsic value, serve no useful social purpose, while consuming large amounts of energy. Being used by criminals in scams, fraud, and money laundering. <laughs> oh, goodness gracious me. Why are they doing that? Because Bitcoin, and this is why even though I'm not a Bitcoin maxi, I am nothing short of an appreciator of Bitcoin. Um, I love the Pandora's box that it's opened. You know, Bitcoin is a massive threat. Uh, a huge, huge threat to um, the Western world. It's, it's a massive, massive threat um, because it ultimately undermines them. It gives people an option, a choice. Now, the government aren't in the business of, cho of, of, of allowing you to choose, you know? And I could go on and on about that. But, um, and we are actually looking at creating a alternative. It's a hobby of mine, not really something that I'm looking to monetize or anything. Alternative channel where we do look at a number of things. Got some interesting people coming on, hopefully, that are lined up to talk about like um, history, old structures, all that sort of stuff. But anyway, let's play the clip to why governments are like this. Uh, this was a clip talking about Nikola Tesla's life and energy and, and, and why, you know, he, he ended up, you know, pretty much broke, uh, died a relatively poor man despite his genius. Um, but I just want to play the clip about governments uh, here uh, and then I will love and leave you. Peter Lindemann is an authority on the radiant energy Tesla was talking about, and he proposed four forces, actually. And the first being the banking system. And I know what some of you may think. Oh, here comes that guy with that Illuminati conspiracy theory. 
No, we're going to leave that behind. So in a free market economy, everybody is free to earn as much money as they like, but only in the form of the dollar or the euro or whatever currency you have. So you're never going to be paid in gold anymore, for example. So if I would have a system which I can, with which I can raise my own capital with, without borrowing it from a bank, the control of this banking system is lost. So naturally, they try, they do everything to stop this. You can even see this in current day technologies, like photovoltaics and wind turbines. They're already, already being reg regulated more and more because of their devaluating capacity. It's even on the cover of The Economist. It's not a big secret or conspiracy. And that brings me to the second force, national governments. Because governments found out that the true policy that actually works... We'll leave that there, guys. You know, uh, in fact, we'll play that little, little bit about the true policy that works. It's called an eye for an eye. So it's constantly jockeying for influence in world affairs. And it's survival of the fittest, basically. So imagine when one nation or one party in another nation achieves the ability to generate their own power. The balance of power literally shifts from the government to that other nation or party within that nation. And everybody will want this technology. And at the same time, everybody will want to prevent the other from getting it. So to prevent this chaos, governments do something smart. They issue a restriction on any patent or invention that can give an opponent an advantage over the government in power generation. It's called invention secrecy. And it's still going strong, as the Federal Agency of American Scientists says. We'll leave that there. Uh, go and give me a follow on Twitter, guys, if you're not already, um, at Real All in Crypto. Um, you know, well worth it. We post some really interesting things on there because this is ultimately a crypto financial um, channel. But, you know, I have a lot of uh, passion in regards to other fields, like actually trying to get people to wake up to the corrupt world that they live in. And some of you are already well aware of that. Um, others, I think, are still sort of after the past two years coming to that realization. Um, but, you know, I'll try and help as many people as possible do that. And actually, finance is very relevant to um, indoctrination and, and all these other things, uh, because you can change it. We live in a money orientated world and you can change your life massively and buy yourself freedoms. Money really is not anything that I'm that in law of, but freedom certainly is. And I think we all are. And actually money in this day and age is a, is a gateway to that um, and quality of life. So on that note, guys, before I go down any more rabbit holes, today we've done an update on the markets broadly. It's following the plan, guys. It's sticking to it. I see so much panic on every single pullback and we're here to tell you when we think you need to panic and when we think you don't. And we've stated that actually all is hunky-dory. We're looking for upside and we're long and strong. My money's where my mouth is on that. Um, and we think macro, there's reasons to suspect upside across broad markets, risk markets broadly. A bit disappointing from the UK, but the UK are known liars um, in terms of the government. You know, that has been well and truly found out over the past two years and has always been the case, actually, if you look further back. And there's a bit of an enlightening um, clip about why there's such a, uh, what's the word, um, haste. Uh, there's such a kind of a distaste from governments towards the likes of Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies right now. That's all I've got for you in this video, guys. If you enjoyed the content, like us, appreciate it, as a comment, and I'll catch you all in the next one. Thanks all for watching. See you in the next.